everyone, Uncle Jesse here. I have an issue with my fridge and it's gonna cost me almost $100 to fix. And I'm wondering with a little bit of quick 3D modeling and 3D printing, can I fix this issue myself? So we have this fridge in our kitchen and the doors have just never properly worked where it has this little mechanism. I think it's called a mullion. And it's the piece that goes in between the two French doors that helps it stay sealed and unfortunately it just doesn't catch the top part of the door so every time you open it it never fully catches and you always have to manually fold it in before you close the door or it's never going to properly seal. Whirlpool recommended that I have a technician come out which was going to cost me an extra on top of the part that would need to be replaced. I read online someone said I don't know here's the part that you need and it's $90 plus shipping and taxes which is sure to be close to $100 all said and done. So what I wanna do is just add a little 3D printed part to the top of that hinge that's gonna sit over top of it that will allow it to lift up just ever so slightly to catch that hooking mechanism on the door. I should also mention I have digital calipers. I don't know where the heck they are. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my iPhone and I'm gonna use Polycam that's gonna allow me to take a bunch of photos or even video to use that will generate a 3D file of whatever it is that I'm scanning. I'll double check, but I think this might also be available on Android. I know it's for sure available on iOS and it even works on your computer's webcam, which is pretty crazy. This is a paid app and I just signed up for the seven day free trial just to test this out. So I'm taking a bunch of photos here and we're gonna stitch that together to make our 3D rendering that I'm then going to export out from the phone over to my iPad and then bring it into Nomad Sculpt where I can further modify that file. In Nomad, I'm bringing this in and just cleaning up that 3D scan, removing all of the excess scan data that I don't need, trying my best to really just clean up this 3D scan. And what I'm gonna do after I'm done cleaning up the file is just duplicate it resize it ever so slightly and then make the original a negative so it will hollow out the file so that I can create a little bit of a cavity there that we can then run off in 3D print. In theory, this will fit perfectly on top of that little fridge area there. And it's way too big. All right, this, this just isn't quite working the way that I want it to. It's just not super clean. I'm not sure what I was thinking. Obviously, if I brought this into something like Fusion 360, someone could whip this up in no time. But what I'm thinking is I'm gonna take my phone and take a picture from the top down and just get that top aerial view of it as best I can from a flat angle dimension there and then bring it into my iPad onto Adobe Illustrator and create a vector rendering of that that I can then export out as an actual 3D file in Tinkercad that we can then further modify. So here we're in Illustrator. I brought in the photo and I'm just going to start drawing directly over top of this with the pen tool and then modifying the points to more accurately fit all around the corners as best I can against that actual image. Then I can also adjust the opacity to make it a little bit easier for me to see where I'm lining up all of those points. Once I've got everything all settled the way I want it to, I'm gonna change this to an outline only. I don't want anything on the center. And then I'm gonna move the points of the outline to the actual outside edge of the print. This way, if I've taken my photo is accurate and I've modeled this correctly, we should be able to just slide this right over top of the actual piece for the fridge. All right, here it is in Tinkercad and we can tweak this. I can scale it up. Obviously this looks huge. So I'm gonna have to play around and maybe what I'll do is I'll bring in the 3D scan that we used from those other apps, bring it in here to try and get it as close as we can to the correct size. And then we'll just have to adjust it with a few test prints and see what actually fits. All right, here's the biggest one. Uh, yep, that's too big. Medium, let's see if that fits. Oh, oh my gosh, that's a perfect fit. That is, that is like perfect fit. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited about this. Can't believe how well that fits there. I just need to make this taller now so that it sticks out the top. Oh my God, that's perfect. And just to check, this was the smallest. Yeah, this is uh, way too small. It's like good for the top fitting there, but yeah, 
not gonna fit on there. All right, so all I need to do now is just scale up the length of the Z axis of the print so it's a lot taller. I don't even care that it has a top on it or not. I just want this to catch the corner there of the bracket so that the door, uh, so that hinge catches and closes and opens properly. All right, here we go, let's test it out. Can't believe how well that fits. It sticks up, it's a little loose. Closes. <laughs> oh my goodness, I can't believe this actually works. Oh my goodness, this makes me so happy. That was a really fun project that I honestly don't ever do practical 3D printing. I print lots of cosplay and nerdy fun statues and other things like that. I actually I don't do lots of 3D modeling or anything like that. <laughs> especially technical 3D modeling. I'm sure if I had my calipers on hand, that would have made things a lot easier to begin with. And I'm sure a lot of you were cringing when I first started this off, trying to bring this into Nomad or taking a 3D scan of it to begin with. The, the method of taking a photo and then just drawing it out and bringing it into Tinkercad worked so well. And it was really straightforward and easy to do. This fun little project is also being sponsored by the folks over at Elgu, who I also happen to be doing a huge giveaway for thanks to me hitting recently 200,000 subscribers here on YouTube. We are giving away five vouchers over to the Elgoo's Amazon shop, an Elgoo Mars 2 Pro resin 3D printer, and the Elgoo Saturn, which is an amazing mid-size resin 3D printer. If you're interested in more information about the giveaway, you'll find links down below, as well as you'll obviously find more information about any of the Elgoo products that I've shown off in today's video, like the Elgoo Neptune 2, along with these other printers that we're giving away. Thanks again to Elgoo for sponsoring today's video. This was a really fun, quick tutorial project. I don't even know if it was so much of a tutorial as much as me just trial and erroring, trying to figure out a way to model this as quickly as I can here and get it printed to fix this issue for our fridge. Obviously I need to go and reprint this in white and then I think all I'm gonna do is maybe even just super glue it to the fridge there. My wife is already thrilled that I have printed something that is actually functional for our house and isn't you know, like a Magneto statue or something along those lines. Let me know in the comments below how you might have gone about this because my mind immediately went to 3D scanning and bringing it onto my iPad. And I ended up just taking a photo and bringing it on my iPad. I love 3D modeling on a touchscreen tablet stylus type device. And I actually have some fun videos here coming up on some non iPad related uh, drawing tablet fun goodness here coming soon. I also want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters. If you're interested in my resin 3D printer profile, support settings, or information on the Neptune 2 and how I'm printing my settings there for the Neptune 2, you'll find links down below to my Patreon and a big, big thank you to, again, all of my Patreon supporters for your continued support. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye now.